Hello, this is Jennifer Martinez. Welcome to the first trigonometric video in this course. This video goes over knowing the definition of the trig functions. What is a trig function anyway? Well, believe it or not, it is the ratio of two sides of a right triangle and all the different combinations. So that's why I'm starting here with a right triangle. You know it's a right triangle because one side is 90 degrees and they signify that 90 degrees by the little box as you saw in the first couple of sections. So let's label one of these angles that is not 90 degrees with theta. And then let's call this the opposite. Let's call this side the adjacent because this is the opposite of the angle and this is the adjacent of that angle. And finally, let's call this the hypotenuse. And let's look at all the different ratios. Well, we have the opposite over the hypotenuse. The definite of that, definition of that is going to be sine and they abbreviate it as such. Then what about the adjacent over the hypotenuse? Well, the definition of the adjacent over hypotenuse is going to be cosine and finally, what about the opposite, because we've done both of them with the hypotenuse, what about the opposite over the adjacent? I'm just abbreviating these. And the definition of that is going to be tangent. Now they don't think of trig as triangle trig until chapter two. They define it a different way. How they define it is um, they call this x and you'll see y in a minute. They call this y and they call this r. And then this would be a y over r is the definition that you see in chapter one, x over r, and finally y over x. The reason I want to identify them now this way is because there's a cute little scene. Sokotoa and that would be sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So while you're learning these, that's a cute way to memorize what is what. And then you'll see these definitions of opposite and hypotenuse and adjacent in the next chapter. But there's three other ratios we have not looked at. What if you flip these? Um, the r over y, well, they call that cosecant of theta. You can call it hypotenuse over opposite, um, if you would rather. And then finally, r, well, not finally, but r over x, if you flip those, that's another ratio. The definition of that one is secant. And finally, if you flip the tangent, x over y, the definition of that is cotangent. The reason that they label them as x, y, and r is they like to think of these points in our x, y axis. You can notice I drew the x, y axis in red on our graph, and then this actually could be the point the x, and this can be the point y. So if you notice on the very first definition of trig in the book is written this way. If you notice that the theta in R's only can be 0 to 90 degrees, right? But when you have a theta over 90 degrees, you can use any angle from between 0 and 360. And then you would define the point at the little triangle to be um, the one below here. And the triangle would be uh, the points x, y, so this is x, this is y, and this is r, correct? And the definition of the six trigonometric functions are the same. Sine of theta is going to be y over r, cosine x over r, tangent y over x, and cosecant, cosecant and cotangent are going to be the same as well. And we still have a right triangle there. And by the way, R, definition of R, how it relates, as we know from the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals R squared. Or R is the square root 
of x squared plus y squared. You don't have to worry about the plus or minus. In this case, r is always going to be positive only. So that is the definition. Okay, so I'm going to end this with a homework problem from your homework. Sketch the angle theta in standard position such that theta has the least possible positive measure and the point negative 3, negative 4 is on the terminal side of theta. What that means is, if you look on here, this is called the terminal side of theta. x, y is on the terminal side. Here's theta. So right here, if I look at the point negative 3, negative 4, we know that's in the third quadrant. Negative 3, negative 4. So that's the only one that's in the third quadrant. And the theta, right, the x, y is on the terminal side. And the theta, by the way, is going to be defined to be on the x, y, or the x axis, all the way to that point, negative 3, 4. Let me draw that a little larger. Here's my very rough graph. There's negative 3, negative 4, and there's my angle. I always go up. I always think of a bow tie. The, the, we saw um, on that, right, we go down, so we're always going to the x-axis. So this one we go up to make our triangle. That's our angle. There's my x, there's my y. x is equal to negative 3. y is equal to negative 4. And r, by the way, there's my r. If you use the Pythagorean theorem, the r is going to be negative 3 squared plus negative 4 squared, which equals 9 plus 16 which is the square root of 25, or 5. So r is equal to 5. So finally, they ask you to find the exact value of the trig, six trig functions. So we know that sine of theta, by definition, is y over r. If you look above, oops, let's look above, there it is. So we know that that would be a negative 4 over 5. Cosine of theta, by definition, is x over r, if you look above, which is negative 3 over 5. And then you can also find tangent, which is y over x, which is y over x, so negative 4 over negative 3. By the way, two negatives is a positive. And then you can find the same for cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So we know that this would be negative 5 over 4. It doesn't matter if you put the negative in the numerator or the denominator. So you could have said 4 of 5 over negative 4, or I'm just going to say negative 5 fourths. The same thing here, negative 5 over 3, right? Flip those, and this would be a flip of the tangent three-fourths. Hope that helps.